Prairie server is there you on? On like Discord. Uh, on Discord, that is a long list. Mostly the servers of other content creators that I'm close with. A couple mm. of servers designed for collaboration between content creators. Oh, uh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. No, we share one. <laughs> Which one? Well, let's see. It says right at the top of the screen. Uh, you're you're calling. What made her this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On May 15th, 2019, YouTuber Nick Robinson uploaded a video in which he discusses Pappy Van Poodle, a character from the Nintendo 3DS game Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, about whom next to no information existed and was difficult to encounter. According to a certain commenter, they claimed that Christine was the first person to have discovered Pappy Van Poodle. To confirm who was the first to have found the character in the game, Nick Robinson uploaded a follow-up video on May 25th, which featured a brief interview with Chris. Um, so I, I'm, I'm making a video about a 3DS game called Rusty's Real Deal Baseball. Did, yeah, the real deal. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I played it. Oh, awesome. It was, yeah, free to play, but yet pay to play also. Yeah. I lost I remember playing a bunch of mini games within it, and look at the deal with Rusty. Uh, you remember like there was like a haggling thing where you could negotiate with Rusty? Oh yeah. Did you? Like, <laughs> You're not making me lose my whole profit margin. You make me go below even breaking even. So I somebody told me that you had played the game and that when when you had negotiated with Rusty, did you did you haggle with him? You haggled the money down. Yeah, way down. Oh, got it. Um, I'm trying to track down who originally um, f discovered this character for the first time, and somebody in a YouTube comment said that you had encountered this character or that you didn't negotiate, but I guess that's not true. Yeah, not quite. Sorry. It's okay. What are your like main memories of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball? The back and forth between me and a wabbit. Because Rusty was a wabbit. I right. just like saying that. <laughs> I actually, you know, I, you might be thinking of Nintendo Badge Arcade because that was a rabbit. I think Rusty was actually a dog. Oh, okay. Well, my mistake. It's okay. At around the same time, Chris's debt repayment case with Midland funding was updated to a garnishment case, meaning that if ruled in favor of the debt collectors, it would be required by the court to pay back the debt by forcibly taking funds available to Chris. On May 25th, Chris wrote a 20-tweet thread describing her new technique of falling asleep and lucid dreaming, or becoming aware that she is dreaming while dreaming. She afterwards added that her friend, Maker Nightfee, had apparently discovered the technique before Christine, but unlike Maker, Chris was able to describe it. If the sleep-slash-meditation technique were to be scientifically studied, she hoped it would be named the Maker-Chan Meditation-slash-Sleep Technique. On May 26th, it appeared that the enablers Sarah and Steve cancelled their plans of moving to Virginia and personally helping Christine in her artistic and business endeavors. Some hints at what occurred could be gleamed from their updated public Twitter profile description. Just a couple of idiots who assumed they could help Christine, swindled out of hundreds of dollars and were treated as subhuman.
should have listened to warnings given. They soon after changed their profile biography to a crying face emoji. Through private messaging, they elaborated that they fell out with Chris because she failed to acknowledge them for extended periods while she posted extensively on Twitter about the dimensional merge. Thus Sarah and Steve feared of being shunned for weeks after relocating. After a short while, Sarah and Steve admitted on Twitter that they were giving Chris a second chance, hoping she would reply to their messages more quickly. On that same day, a user on the social media site Reddit posted in the devoted Chris Chan discussion group, or subreddit, that he drove through Ruckersville, Virginia and made a detour to quickly visit Christine, posting a selfie he took with her. He noted she shook his hand for an extended period of time and was wet, possibly after having gotten out of the shower. On May 31st, Christine reflected on finding out that the Dean of Student Services for Piedmont Virginia Community College, Mary Lee Walsh, with whom she had a noted history of conflict, had retired two weeks prior. I wish to offer kind words of her and the work she did there, regardless of what had happened between her and I in many years ago. She had her occupation. She performed to the best of her ability and judgment over the years. I do not recall much about her, and I have personally apologized to her for the mishaps and what had happened to her self-counterpart in Dimension C-197. I never knew her beyond acquaintance and professional boundaries and distance. I have never heard of her direct thoughts on the portrayal of her character, nor on the fame and fandom she had acquired from my own hand, psychic links, and so forth. My one grievance with her being of her uncharismatic and anger, induced attitude and behavior when it comes to dealing or communicating with those who are only trying to find their own way in life. In my case, I submit the constructive criticism that I was unable to speak to her way back then would be the calm, level-headed, direct statement with no intent of personal space and personal property destruction nor malcontent. Mary Lee Walsh should have said to me upon the first encounter, This public advert is most inappropriate. It portrays you as a sexual solicitor. That is not a way to make conversation with others. Please put this advert away and never pull it out again. If you need help in socializing and talking with others, I can recommend some social skill courses and support groups for the very shy. Is that clear to you? We probably could have avoided the tons of awkwardness and emotions looming over our shoulders, especially hers, had she been simply direct and civil like that back in 2003 with me. Regardless, what happened to and with her has long passed. Move forward and onward, and I humbly and sincerely wish Mary Lee Walsh, here in Dimension 1218, only the most comfortable and blessed years in her retired life until her time of passing. She had suffered enough, and I leave her to live on in peace of mind and forgiveness. Have a nice life, Mary Lee Walsh. Lightning, blue heart, lightning emojis. Sincerely, Mrs. Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu. Okay, D-U-M-B question. Has Mary Lee Walsh, here, ever, made any personal recorded statement about her thoughts and feelings about me and all of this since after I delivered the apology drawing to her and then received a freaking trespassing notice from her in 2009. Now that this can of worms has been opened yet again by someone who texted me earlier asking me what my thoughts about her retirement were and I would be remised and dogged if I had not tweeted the set just a while ago. I feel needs to know what she had thought of it all. Tall as knacht, people. Had to add this back onto my pile of stresses, didn't y'all? Also, please never ever remind me of Michael John Snyder, or even inform me at all rather or not he had died. I had long moved forward from that jerk, way in the past, and no need to do that to me either. To me, that jerk has been dead since I found the game and hobby place has been long gone, out of business, and replaces by a chocolate store. Leave that be with me, please. Kristen posted an animated gif of meditative deep breathing to possibly calm herself down. 
On June 6th, in reply to a challenge from the official Pokemon Twitter account, Chris took part and assigned people on Twitter to be characters in her fictitious Pokemon journey, selecting the first account that automatically was prompted to her, which included US President Donald Trump and some of her online friends. When an individual told her that since her account was protected, no one who did not follow her would see her tweet, asking when would she learn, Christine wrote back, never, promising to continue tagging accounts as necessary, closing with ALOL, an acronym which stood for actually laughing out loud. On June 8th, Chris found out that the free encyclopedia, Wikipedia, had an article about the QB Farms forum and requested for her to be omitted from the written history of the site. In addition, she wrote she would like to have her own Wikipedia page created for her, written in a positive light without any hate. Finally, she said she did not condone the role of QB Farms in their so-called top three planned scandals, which left many people dead or injured. On June 12th, Christine wrote an extended Twitter thread explaining that she won't settle for a regular job because she was, in a sense, employed by deities to manage the dimensional merge. She also wrote the same message on her Patreon page to explain why she was unable to send the Sonichu comics to her paying patrons. On June 13th, Chris reflected on his graduation from Manchester High School in the year 2000, regretting that during the ceremony, he showed his anger at not being recognized for his artistic efforts by snatching away his diploma and storming off stage without shaking anyone's hand. She wished for people to identify those who were on stage so she could apologize to them. As an addendum, Christine wished for the domain of the Chris Chan wiki, the quickie, to be changed from sonichu.com to quickie.com so she could eventually claim the Sonichu domain for her own website project run by a trusted friend. When a Twitter user asked her why she couldn't use her superpowers to track down the people from the ceremony, she answered that she was still getting used to her powers, which remained unpredictable and wild. Later that day, Chris wrote a tweet thread in which she revealed that Jesus Christ allegedly told her that he and his mother, Emmanuel, have been working really hard in the dimensional merge, which was in its final stages and would take place in the coming days. Jesus was reaching out in all of the real world dimensions churches, holy spots, portals, pokestops, and Pokemon gyms, but also asked Christine to extend the reach of his message and tell everyone to believe in the original characters created by themselves and others. Also on that same day, she wrote on Twitter that her mother, Barbara, had been badgering her for damned money again, so Chris advertised a quilted throw blanket for sale on the auction marketplace website eBay for $225, including shipping. In addition, Christine made a YouTube video addressing trollsome mail she had been receiving, which was jokingly addressed to major YouTuber PewDiePie. She claimed in the video title that PewDiePie did not live at her address and instead lived in Sweden. Though born in Sweden, PewDiePie, in actuality, lived in the United Kingdom. Hello everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. And today, I'm setting something straight. Every so often, every so often, and this ticks me off because not only does the actual person does not get the mail, but I hate it to forward it is impossible for me because I don't have his address and he lives in Sweden. Felix Aved Kjellberg, also known as P E W D Pi, does not live here at <laughs> Rockville, Virginia, two two nine six eight. And I never, ever, ever want to see another piece of mail addressed to him sent to me here. And PewDiePie, please, please, please put a mailing address on your YouTube channel to where your fan mail and everything can actually be sent to. Please, please, thank you. Chris then went to Twitter to post a photo of all the hate mail that a single person sent to her multiple times per month. She wrote that she did not open the envelopes, as they were transparent both to light and her psychic powers, and would be sending them all back. 
Afterwards, she notified PewDiePie's Twitter account that she would be sending back all mail addressed to the YouTuber and asked for him to make a public address to let his fans know the correct address to which they should send fan mail. Finally, on June 13th, Chris posted a video in which she asks for people to believe in the original characters or OCs and deities in regards to the dimensional merge. We have a bit of a situation. Turns out, while we do have a good number of believers in the OCs, CPUs, deities, and everyone between our sister dimension of C197 and their, their surrounding dimensions, and right here, dimension 1218, we could do a whole lot better in the believers. Even Jesus Christ himself came to me earlier today, told me so, asked me to relay the message. Everybody, believe in the OCs, and everybody, the dimension merge is happening. And we could definitely make the dimension merge happen a whole lot faster and over with. Definitely for the better benefit of everybody. Everybody! Within both our dimensions and the combined dimensions. Just give them a thought. Give your OCs a thought. Any of them. Whether they be branded, not branded. Your creations, someone else's creations, so forth. Sanchi wrote you. The CPUs, uh, anime characters, and Magic Chan. If you can see him right now, he's literally sitting right here. Anyway, Jesus Christ himself and our God Emmanuel, they're all ceased too. Though they literally are those that have worked here. Like, you know, your Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for real here. He's an OC. I'm an OC. If anything, between you and your self counterparts, you, every one of you is an OC as well. So, if anything, you believe in everyone else, you believe in yourselves as well. All right? And more importantly, don't hate. All right? We don't need any hate, any more hate raid, especially freaking cyber boys and bad internet trolls. But this, aside from that, believe in the OCs. Believe in your OCs. Believe in yourself as an OC. Believe in Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Who, Emmanuel, by the way? God is a woman. And I have personally met them face to face. And if you don't believe me in that, I've literally touched Jesus' hands. I cry every time I feel that scar in his hand. Well, cross when he did that, but still. Anyway, as a guy as myself, I am unable to worship Jesus or any of the other deities. But I am friends. Jesus and all the other deities, including CPUs. So the least I could do is support them and be a friend. That's what I do to the best of my abilities. Everywhere. My soul, my brain, my body. Literally working round the clock. Everywhere. And I'm flying by to see my pants by each thing that comes in. So I can relay it out to you via my Twitter or whatever. But in the meantime, believe. Believe in all of us OCs and everything. And the Dimension Merge is happening. We're approaching our end game. And we are destined and fated to win. So follow my motivational speech, please, and follow our lead. We will complete this merge. We will all be existent and coexistent with each other. And we will be able to hang out fully with our own creations. I'm very serious about that. It's happening. It's happening. Believe. Thank you. Have a good day.
On June 14th, Chris listed the complete set of Sonichu comic books for sale on eBay in a single $170 bundle. The bundle also included the Chris Chan prequel comic by Brian Frogboy and Rose Chu's story, which apart from the Chris penned front cover, was entirely written and illustrated by QB Farms user Tricky. Christine further wrote on Twitter that all orders would be directly shipped from the book printing company and so would not include any custom orders or autographs. She realized that the rewards she listed on Patreon, such as custom book orders and autographing and shipping them herself, cost her extra time and money, which she could not handle because of her dedication to the dimensional merge. The next day, Chris's avid follower, Jacob Sockness received the blanket which he purchased from her eBay account. He proceeded to announce that he asked a hypothetical mirror who was the sexiest oddest, and it allegedly replied that it was Sockness. The tweet also included four photos of Jacob laying on the blanket and posing seductively in an array of revealing clothing. On June 16th, she dedicated the year's Father's Day to her father, Bob Chandler posting on Twitter a photo of a newspaper clipping of her dad being celebrated for his contributions to General Electric. Chris celebrated his patents and achievements, which apparently directly led to many technological advancements such as three-dimensional printing. She reflected that Bob told her to live her life to the best, and that he was currently a very intelligent man slash Sonichu, who after the dimensional merge would be able to hug Chris's mother Barbara once more. Christine shared a picture she drew of Chris Chan Sonichu with her father in Sonichu form, Robert Chu, reflecting that since that drawing, her father had allegedly changed his fur color from plaid to almost all red, because it was hard for her to color a plaid pattern. It was at around this time that Chris's eBay account was restricted and all her listings were removed, likely due to her overall positivity rating of 85%, an exceptionally low figure for the site. On June 17th, she tweeted asking her followers if they also felt like it was the same day for a number of consecutive days, or when a day has passed though it felt like a whole week. On June 19th, Christine finally acknowledged that her eBay account had been restricted and that her PayPal account was in debt. She stated that every direct $170 donation to her PayPal account would function as payment for the Sonichu Comics bundle and will order the set of books for the donators. Jacob Sockness did not entertain the idea of using the financial company to purchase the comics, for he did not trust Chris to fulfill orders on the count of her failings with Patreon. Not long after her announcement, someone presumably donated the aforementioned amount, bringing her PayPal account out of debt, and notified the unknown buyer that their book order would soon be shipped out after printing. When someone accused Christine of setting the $170 price to allow for herself $100 for shipping and profits, she clarified that printing cost $110, $30 for 3-day shipping, and the remaining $30 for her personal profit. Also on June 19th, Chris and her mother attended their scheduled court hearing in regards to two cases of debt owed to Portfolio Recovery Associates. QB Farms user Sige Sige Spurgnik personally attended the hearing and later on gave an account of what they witnessed. 11.03 AM, Chris and Barb arrive. More accurately, I hear Chris sighing, squealing, and whining as he sets off the metal detector at the main door of the court, repeatedly. They come into the courtroom and sit down in relative quiet. 11.05 AM, Chris starts playing with a fidget spinner. 11.07 AM, Chris starts making ridiculous noises, raspberries, light shrieks, grunts, etc. Barb shushes him. Chris replies to her discipline with, we're taking a break so I can make a little noise if I want. This was delivered in the tone of voice of a smug yet pouting six-year-old. 11.12 AM, Chris starts making whoop whoop noises and singing a childish tune that largely consists of him going la 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 in yet another six-year-old's tone of voice. Strangely enough, the first time I ever encountered him in public, late last February slash early March, 
he was singing something virtually identical as he was walking down the street. The fidget spinner is still going. 11.22 a.m. Ten minutes of relative quiet are broken by another of Chris's noisemaking fits. This time, it's a giant hiccup, followed by sighs, squeals, and more fidget spinner as he grunts at no one in particular. 11.23 a.m. Chris tears himself away from the fidget spinner long enough to make a comment to Barb about something to do with hairy legs. Couldn't make out the first part of it due to the acoustics, but she shushed him again. The six-year-old voice came out again to say, But they are hairy legs! Followed by something else unintelligible and more fidget spinner. 11.27 a.m. Judge sits down again, starts getting the 11.30 session.
I wanted to make. But you know, I think I found one. Starting today, I will be rebranding this channel. The new name will be called Radiance. And I'll- Oh, hi. Hi guys, and welcome to a new video. I know it's been a while. I've been trying to do some soul searching, trying to find a purpose for this channel. I didn't really know what to do or what kind of videos I wanted to make. But you know, I think I found one. Starting today, I will be rebranding this channel. The new name will be called Radiance. And I'll explain why. A lot of people seem to think that social media matters in the grand scheme of things. But honestly, it's just a bunch of noise. It doesn't really affect me in my real life and it shouldn't affect your life either. I feel like we put social media on a throne, but really it's meant to connect us, not divide us. I feel like we do more dividing because we want to feel better. When in reality, it just turns into bullying. So my new channel name will be Radiance because I want to show people that no matter how much hate, no matter how